my name is Tim Cadlick. Um, I'm from Three Lakes, Wisconsin, which is a small town of about a thousand people in the middle of nowhere. Um, that's a thousand people during the summer. It's about like 500 or whatever during the winter when it's cold. So responsive web design, uh, it, it all kind of started with an article that Ethan Marcotte wrote in uh, May of 2010 for List Apart. And it was taking three ingredients that already existed, um, you know, fluid layouts, media queries, and fluid images, and combining them into one approach under this umbrella term responsive web design. Uh, so the idea is that if you combine these uh, carefully, you can create a layout that will respond to the width of your device. So if you open it up on a phone, you'll get an appropriate layout for your phone on a tablet, an appropriate layout for your tablet, and same thing on the desktop. Uh, and that's kind of where the discussion started, and then the more uh, people delved into it, they started to find out that the conversation needed to go a lot further, so now you've got, there's a whole uh, thick conversation taking place around it about like how do you serve appropriately sized images, and what do you do with like content hierarchy because you shouldn't just be stacking everything and stuff like that. So there's a lot more concerns than what was initially brought up, but that's the general approach. I would like to say that in the majority of cases, I think you know taking like a mobile first approach and considering that mobile experience first uh, is probably going to be more beneficial uh, because the the number of mobile devices is uh, steadily increasing and it's becoming the dominant platform uh, and also because it helps you to focus on those key uh, tasks and those key uh, features that your users really really need, but as with anything on the web, it, it depends. You know, we like to talk in shades of black and white, but everything is kind of a shade of gray. And so the project is going to dictate what the correct approach is. Um, I think that the, the one thing that should be um, considered above all else, though, is that just making sure that right away from the start, you're planning about how is your content going to be uh, consumed on at these different sizes and in these different contexts. I think it's because of where the discussion started. A lot of people kind of stop with that, those first three things, the media queries, the layout, and the images, and don't consider what happens to the other, um, uh, the other aspects of it as it adjusts. And, and one of the common things is content hierarchy. Um, so you have, let's say you have a site where uh, you're producing some sort of framework or tool and you want people to download that tool. On the desktop, you may have that download button off to the right of the screen, and it works perfectly fine. But then when that's turned into a vertical stack, like it often is on the phone, that button can sometimes get lost way down the page. And so, I mean, simple things like that, making sure that the, the importance of content is still reflected on the small screen as it is on your, uh, the larger screen. Um, I think there's like a performance consideration that needs to be taken place too. Um, there are several examples, I won't name any specifically, but there are numerous examples of sites where because they're not taking the time to serve appropriately sized images, just you know, taking a big image and, and stretching it, so to speak, um, instead of actually resizing, uh, you end up with this incredible bloat. So you have like a small screen device that maybe the images are you know 75 percent bigger than what they actually need to be uh, and sometimes what's even worse is if you're hiding content on those smaller screens and you're not careful about how you're doing that uh, you end up requesting and downloading all of these different assets and information and content that never even shows up on the display uh, so it's just really taking the time to consider what do you have to do beyond those three ingredients it's not just make it responsive and you've got kind of the badge of achievement you know it's it's make it responsive but the goal is not to be responsive but to provide an optimal user experience no matter the device and to do that requires that you think beyond those ingredients the web is an interactive medium and there's a lot more potential there than we're actually using right now and a lot of the things that we can do now are things that Historically, we've only read about in science fiction and, and watched in the science fiction movies. There are some really interesting things we can do to make experiences that extend beyond the constraints of one device and that incorporate in interactions between devices. Um, so I'm hoping people take away that, hey, this is an interactive medium. We're just now starting to understand just how flexible and just how uh, malleable the medium is. And, and hopefully people take away that we can actually do some really, really awesome things with this if we take a little bit of time to consider these other capabilities.